City Clerk Sue Richards will read us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. There are two ways of meeting difficulties. You alter the difficulties or you alter yourself to meet them. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt? Here. Warren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Excused. Common? Here. Hammond? Here. Heideman? Here. Koss? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichuk? Excused. Rinfleisch? Here. Raisler? Here. Sampson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Versi? Here. 14 present. We have a quorum now if we can all stand and join Alderperson Koss in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Julie. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we approve the previous minutes. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean? I don't believe there are any. No appointments? No. Uh, public forum, Sue. Thank you. First on the list this evening would be Milt Storm. <coughs> Mayor, would you please come up to the front? <coughs> And can I have your home address, Melt? Well, I really don't like to give my home address because I'm getting a couple of nasty letters, you know, but I'll give it to you. It's 1736 Marvin Court. And that's Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I'll try to be brief, but I'm, what I'm going to present may take longer than five minutes. I want to thank Mayor Ryan for this time to address this council. I would like to read two letters to the editor this evening, one from a fine young lady who I have adopted as my daughter, and the other letter is my letter to the editor of December of 2001. My letter was never published in the Sheboygan Press. Now, I'd like to read this letter, and it's titled, Personal Attacks on Mayor Ryan are Inappropriate. Who sat on a judgment throne and declared themselves judge and jury in this city? Now that everyone knows our mayor battles the horrible disease of alcoholism, just how is that productive and beneficial to him or to the city of Sheboygan? Have you ever been used as every human level of selfish, self-serving purpose by someone you trusted? Have you ever been judged by people who have no business in your personal life, much less no fact from fiction? It's awful, it's evil, and in some cases illegal. The ones guilty of this need to get off their judgment's thrones, set aside their emotional outbursts that are now causing the taxpayers of Sheboygan, and give basic human decency, logic, and reason a try. If more could do that around here, perhaps we could stop being the laughing stock of the state. I paid attention while Mayor Bob Ryan was an alderman. Never saw a problem with his job performance, and I spoke with several people in his district on a regular basis. Never heard one complaint or negative word. I emailed all 16 aldermen asking what our mayor has done in the job that his drinking has affected negatively. Crickets. No response from 14 of 16, and the two that had the courtesy to respond said nothing, they knew nothing. People following him, texting with aldermen about him, that's stalking. Stalking is a crime. Should we know which aldermen were involved in this heinous behavior? You want to sit in judgment seat. Sit in judgment of the people behind the creation of this mess, not the mayor. All you gossip mongers, perhaps it's time you see your faces splashed across half of the front page of the Sheboygan Press for all seven to ten days running with lots of immoral judgment calls and revolting anonymous gossip. Give yourself a taste of your own despicable behavior. After all, fair is fair. For Alderman uh, Versi, I've received more nasty letters with no return address and no author. It may involve former older persons. My letters have, are with the police department for investigation. Now my letter that was never published in the Sheboygan Press. 
I've got a picture of who a lady wrote an editorial letter in the Sheboygan Press. Her name is Sue Strandberg. A Plymouth says she discovered Mark Twain when she was 11 and promptly became an atheist. We don't call it a religion, we call it a life philosophy. We don't worship anything, including human beings. We follow principles instead of people and question, investigate, and test everything. Now here's my letter to, the, uh, to her response. Jerry Doyle, the former alderman, and Jeffrey Valen and myself responded to her letter. I would like to read my letter, but before I do, I asked Mr. John Hill if this Mark Nurgle Collins was a friend of Sue Strandberg. He's the one that wrote and attacked me and Jeffrey Valen and, and Jerry Doyle. I asked Mr. Hill if Mr. Collins was a friend of Sue Strandberg. When I had him on the phone, he said Sue Strandberg told him that this Mark Nurgle Collins of Branbury, England, the UK, was not a friend of hers. I asked Mr. John Hill, why didn't you publish my letter to protect my good name? And here's the letter. It certainly seems appropriate for me to respond to the Sheboygan Press editorial letter from Mark Collins, December 4, 2001. It must be a first to be trashed by a self-styled, tolerant liberal with his gobbledygook for debunking the views of his friend. When he demagogues my character along with Jeffrey Valen, Jerry Doyle, and other Christian people of Sheboygan, Mr. Collins shows his own arrogance, bigotry, and intolerance when comparing us to extremists who attacked the WTC, that's the World Trade Center. They were not extremists, they were evil criminals. Mr. Collins needs a lot of repentance and learn forgiveness. Maybe he and his British cronies are still bitter for a Christian like General George Washington and many of the founding fathers for winning the Revolutionary War. Chapter 23 of Proverbs, verse 7, states that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Because of his ignorance, Collins has insulted many a Christian in our Sheboygan community. Excuse Shibu me, would you like your extra minute? Yes, please. Sheboygan, am I okay? Please continue. Go ahead. Sheboygan can be proud of a community of many denominations, Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish churches open to all people. This is why I believe we have an environment that makes our area a unique, pla a unique place to raise a family. Here is my Christian message to Mr. Collins and his ilk. Number one, learn to honestly and truthfully evaluate yourself, lest you fail in your endeavors to run others down. Number two, identify your needs before your wants. Learn some real tolerant behavior. Number three, be responsible for your own actions. Learn not to criticize others falsely. Mend your ways and learn more about repentance and forgiveness. Number four, get out of your comfort zone. If you cannot tell the truth, then stay where you are and suffer the consequences. Let's keep the Sheboygan community a place of high moral and Christian values. Thank you, Mr. John Hill and Sheboygan Press. Thank you. Thank you, Milt. Thank you, Milt. Next. Next on the list is um, Jerry Plain. Jerry, if you could come up. <coughs> Jerry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, 1238 Castle Avenue. Castle. Mm -hmm. And you will have five minutes. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. I'm here with many of my fellow Rotarians tonight to talk to you a little bit about a project that we're very excited about. The motto of Rotary International, which includes the four clubs in Sheboygan County, is service above self. And in an attempt to provide a local community service, we wish to host a new annual holiday event beginning in 2012 called Making Spirits Bright. This would be a drive-through light display where the admission is simply a donation of non-perishable food and other needed products to be delivered to local food pantries and the food bank, or we would accept a cash, cash donation. As has been the tradition of the club's fundraising efforts, 100% of the profit would be used by the participating clubs for local organizations requesting assistance. Following the model of other successful communities, we anticipate collecting 30,000 to 40,000 food items the first year. According to the United Way Food for Tomorrow report, individuals requesting food share increased from 10,794 in 2009 
to 12,000, 12 individuals in 2010, or an increase of 1,218 recipients. 29% of our school-aged children in Sheboygan County use the free or reduced school lunch program. These are your neighbors, the people that sit next to you in church, the unemployed and the underemployed in our community and in our county. I've been a Rotarian for 17 years, and never have I been more excited about a service project. With the loss of the Festival of, Festival of Trees in the last year or two, there is no other holiday event currently being conducted, certainly none that would have the impact that we propose this project would have on our county. Many volunteer groups would be assisting us in creating a general feeling of goodwill and certainly providing much assistance to our county families in need. We contacted and visited eight different locations in the county in trying to select our venue for this event. After six months of meetings and exhaustingly investigating all options presented to us, the steering committee voted on Evergreen Park as our choice of venue. A city park for the use and enjoyment of all citizens of Sheboygan County. Even though we understood and still understand the skiers have traditionally been exclus had exclusive use of this park during the winter season, our hope has always been to reach a compromise with them and still accomplish both of our goals. We would encourage, in fact, the ski club members to work with us in the op operations aspect of our event to help maintain the integrity of their skiing season. Although we have asked to access the park until December 23rd for Making Spirits Bright, the Public Works Committee voted unanimously at their meeting last Tuesday that Making Spirits Bright may have access to the park from November 15th to December 16th in the year 2012, with removing the holiday light displays by December 19th. And we are asking the Common Council tonight to uphold their recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Next. Uh, next we have Greg Liebig. Liebig. Liebig, I'm sorry. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, this, this is a pretty German community, and it's a pretty German name, you know. So. There you go. <laughs> and Greg, can I have your home address? Sure. Uh, my address is 419 Erie Avenue. Erie. Mm -hmm. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I am the chair of the Design and Build Committee for Making Spirits Bright. Uh, you've just heard, just heard of the number of pantries we are, will be contributing to, along with the different service organizations that will be helping us put this uh, event together. I would like to share some additional details with you. Uh, in the spirit of Sheboygan, I don't see any reason why both groups can't coexist. One of the charts you see in front of you, the first one with the purple lines on it, that's uh, the, the chart showing the different uh, groups that do this in Curly in Wisconsin. The Cross has been doing it for the longest for 15 years. I unfortunately could not get the data quick enough for the last three years uh, of their event, but you can see they've uh, gradually increased their, their success rate for the food pantries uh, in the La Crosse area. La Crosse and West Bend are similar sized communities as, uh, to Sheboygan, and you'll see the West Bend uh, graph, there they started two years ago. So <clears throat> looking at the first year totals, uh, that's kind of what we we'll use for our projections. The second graph on the second page, what that shows is the only, only group that we had information from on a daily basis was Marshfield. So what I did is I took the Marshfield information and plotted it out, um, they run through the tw 31st of, of the year. So I could, based upon the park, uh, Parks Department recommendations, we cut ours off at the 16th. That's why you see that line you know, in, the, in the green area. That was the kind of the high and low based upon you know, the projections that we had, um, not taking into account the difference in time from Christmas time. So that's kind of where the difference that Jerry mentioned about 30,000 to 40,000 versus what we have here. That was just an adjustment that was you know, made and we're gonna have to rethink some of the things we're gonna be doing. The uh, biggest thing you know, that we're looking at, again, service above self is Rotary's, Rotary's motto. Uh, each Rotary club in Sheboygan County has already pledged $2,500 per club 
uh, for seed money, which totals ten thousand dollars. This is about one tenth of the projected cost that we're looking at doing. Uh, it's going to cost us to put this uh, event together. Again, we're being smart about it. We, we're, we've started this project in November of 2010. Really, it's been that long already. And we, and we already, had already planned to do this in 2012 anyway. So we know it's going to take time to put this together. It's a pretty big project. It's going to be something that we're going to service the whole community. We don't understand why anybody would not want to help their neighbor. Uh, and we're looking at this project as a way to build a better community. Again, with the right attitude, both groups could overlap for a few days, and we hope you consider allowing us to use the city park as a public works department as recommended until Sunday, December 16th, 2012. Your support will show Wisconsin that Sheboygan truly cares about our citizens. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Next. All right, I'm not gonna butcher your name. David, I have. <laughs> How do you pronounce your last name, sir? There you go. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> David, can I have your home address? 1609 North 22nd Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right, first off, I want to thank the Common Council for listening to me today. Uh, on behalf of the number of uh, stakeholders and user groups, I want to express my opposition to the use of the one-mile paved road at Evergreen Park for the Rotary's Making Spirits Bright Xmas Christmas Lights Project. Today, members of the Common Council received an email letter from Jim Van Akron expressing similar concerns about the project. His letter touches on many important points. I hope that if you have not had a chance to read it, you will do so. The Rotary Clubs uh, have had previous contact with the volunteer groomers, including Mike Vandersteen. Uh, we appreciate Mike's and other groomers' work on this issue. Uh, the issues for the ski trails include the Northern Kettle Moraine Ski Club, the Fat Cats Mountain Bike Club, the middle school and high school cross-country ski teams and the many local users of the ski trails uh, have yet to have significant input into this decision. Uh, as a volunteer coach for the high school teams, we already uh, have a disadvantage for our kids being that where we are ge geographically located, we compete throughout the state. So uh, the kids up north tend to have a longer season and I really, really would hate to cut it short uh, for them where uh, the ski team has grown from at the inception we had uh, seven kids and five years ago up to now which we have 30 plus kids involved in which we see growth throughout that sport which we would hope to continue. The one mile road loop at Evergreen along with the upper parking lot is the prime ski area there. More importantly, the road loop is positioned such within Evergreen that there is no way to make a new trail around it to get into Maywood without removal of a significant number of trees. Even with that, it would not be user friendly or allow lighted night skiing. There is no good alternative to the present trail system that includes the road loop. The groomers have reviewed this information with the Department of Public Works and the Rotary Clubs. Sheboygan is one of the very few communities to have a cross-country ski trail within the city. The road loop is lit, which makes this location even more unique and useful uh, to the residents of Sheboygan, as well as the high school and middle school ski teams. This is a fantastic trail system, easily accessible, thanks to the efforts of the Department of Public Works and the JC's volunteer groomers. I want to agree with Jim Van Akron in the closing of his letter to the council. I am sure the Christmas Life Project is a good one for our community, but so is the use and maintenance of the urban ski trail for the entire ski season. The trail provides a quality recreational opportunity in our city during the winter months, a time when too few people get adequate exercise. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Next. Uh, last this evening would be Mike Vandersteen. Michael, can I have your home address, please? 320 Lincoln Avenue. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you again tonight. I want to thank uh, the Public Works Committee and the Council for taking another look at it and giving us a chance to express more of the concerns that we had about the cross-country ski trail. I want to read you a little bit of a, a quote that I feel applies to tonight. Compromise is but the sacrifice of one right or good in the hope of retaining another too often ending in the loss of both. 
Well, I hope this compromise will, will get past the, this quote and whatever reasons it was written for. The, uh, as we explained to the Public Works Committee, the cross-country ski trail that resides on the road in Evergreen Park is one of our prime areas for skiing because we don't have to wait uh, for areas to get filled up with snow in order to groom. Any other part of that trail in, in uh, Maywood or J.C. Park, you've got a, a varied terrain, a lot of rocks and, and different kinds of things growing there. And it takes a number of snowfalls until we can establish a base there, where we can establish a base very quickly on that Evergreen Park Road. So at the meeting, Jim Boren, at chairman, asked uh, our groomers, well, when do you normally get in on an average for, for most years? And uh, they said, well, it was around the middle of December. So Jim asked the uh, Rotary Club if they would uh, concede to uh, bringing their event back to that. Then we took a look at the 2012 calendar, saw that Sunday was the 16th, and they needed a few days to uh, remove all the uh, lighted items. So we agreed with the 19th. I, uh, I think this is a, a good compromise. It's something that we can try uh, for a year. Now, the one thing I noticed in the documents that you have before you tonight, it's got the right dates in there, but the Public Works Committee also talked about that this would be for one year and that would come back to Public Works before future years would be approved. So I don't know if there needs to be an amendment to, uh, to take care of that. I, I guess I just want to... You know, the thing that's happened, I just want to explain a little bit uh, about like Ivan and others who have spoken up about the ski trail and have been opposed to any compromise. You know, there isn't a, a real good list of all the skiers. Uh, when we try to communicate with them, it kind of goes by word of mouth. And it's taken some time for more and more people to hear the news that this might be affecting the ski season for them in 2012. So I, I appreciate you listening to the concerns, but I think that we can all live with this compromise that uh, was formed at the Public Works Committee meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mike. That's it. Okay, thank you everybody for speaking at Public Forum this evening. Uh, <coughs> next under uh, Mayor's announcements, uh, this is an announcement for the public as well as for the aldermen. Um, next, Council meeting uh, two weeks from this evening. The Survive Alive trailer uh, has been, is going to be complete, uh, sponsored by Sheboygan Chevrolet, correct, Chief? Um, and will be out in front of City Hall um, for before the next council meeting for viewing. So uh, we thank Sheboygan Chevrolet for that. It will be out in front. A uh, couple other announcements. Uh, the Erie Hill neighborhood will be having, it will be uh, completing a door-to-door -door survey this Saturday, October 8th, from 9.30 a.m. until noon. Um, Erie Hill neighborhood uh, is from 14th Street over to 17th Street, mm -hmm. Chad, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, is it? Superior. Erie Avenue to Superior Avenue. So those aldermen definitely uh, that that is their district. Um, it's very important that they attend. Um, I would hope to be there myself. Um, neighborhood associations are, are uh, very important to sustain our neighborhoods. Uh, we did have, uh, um, as we know, the uh, Gateway neighborhood is thriving. Uh, we've done the survey in the Indiana Avenue neighborhood. I understand this weekend there was a block party in the Cooper Cleveland area, which uh, Alderman Hammond, that's his district, he attended. Uh, it's very important for neighbors to get to know neighbors. Uh, the Erie Hill neighborhood is a neighborhood that is in need of being stabilized. And so it's very important not only um, that we as city officials uh, partake in this door-to-door -door survey, it's quite enlightening when you actually bang on doors and talk to people and ask them what their concerns about their neighborhood are. But the public is also welcome, welcome people from the Erie Hill neighborhood and volunteers to uh, help out with this. It's, uh, it's a well... Uh, uh, worthwhile uh, project for the future of our city. Registrations are available for the landlord training program. I announced this last council meeting uh, sponsored by the planning department and the police department on October 20th from 5.30 to 9.30 at King Park. I think it's very important that anybody who owns rental properties in the city take this, uh, uh, go through this training program. A uh, nominal fee of $10 is being charged. That includes all your information in that $10 fee. 
um, on both of these items. Um, uh, you can contact uh, the City Planning Department at 459-3377 if you'd like some more information on these. Uh, on, the gate, on the Erie Hill neighborhood, Alderperson Kittleson will also be taking calls on that. Jean has been very active in the neighborhood associations and we thank her for that. Thank you. Another one of uh, Jean's uh, favorite uh, causes here, the third annual March of the Pink Brigade, uh, two to four mile fun run walk will be held uh, Saturday, October 15th from 7 to 10 a.m. beginning at the YMCA Sheboygan. Uh, wear something pink, make a donation, receive a pink bandana. Uh, this is all for uh, uh, breast cancer awareness and uh, to promote early detection. Uh, there'll be raffles, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure, uh, Gene, if you have any questions, uh, city website, uh, Alderperson Kittleson uh, will take care of any questions you may have on that. Again, that will be on October 15th from 7 to 10 a.m. Um, I received an email that I wanted to read to the council. This is from uh, Dave and Judy, and I apologize if I butcher your last name, uh, Wahola, J-A-U-H-O-L-A. Uh, and this was sent to uh, myself um, and to Chief Herman. It says, hello, my husband and I from Esco, Minnesota, want to express our sincere thanks to your fine firefighter EMTs at station number two, which is the 18th Street and Mead station. We are spending a few days with my 87-year-old mother who recently fell and broke her right arm. On the morning of September 27th, she was experiencing shortness of breath and chest pains. We called 911 and personnel from station two arrived. They came in the house, set up, took vitals, received information from us, asked questions, and looked up information from her clinic. They were professional, polite, compassionate, respectful, and most of all, knew their stuff, in quotes. In their communicating with the clinic or hospital in Sheboygan, it was determined my mother needed to go to the hospital in Grafton. I was able to ride in the ambulance, which was a, which was a huge relief to be with her, as we didn't know what would happen. She continues to be in good hands and is facing a stent pr procedure. Before leaving the emergency room in Grafton, one of the EMTs even stopped to talk to her and wish her luck and asked her and said that they hope that she's feeling better. So again, thank you to your great fire and rescue personnel. It's a tough job and they deserve the praise. As mayor and chief, you need to know what great personnel you have. Sound by, signed by Judy and Dave Wahola. Uh, this is good stuff. I mean, this is what it's all about. This is uh, uh, people in the city doing their jobs, doing them professionally, and doing them well. So we thank uh, our, uh, our fire department and our, our EMTs on this. And congratulations, Chief. This is doing a good job here. Uh, other than that, I have no other mayor's announcements this evening. I think I went through my stack. So we will move on uh, to the consent agenda, 13-1. Through 13.7, President Renflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file, and the six report of committees be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on the consent agenda. If there is no discussion, 13.1 through 13.7, roll call, please. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kuntz. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Grinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 138 through 1312 to be referred. Reports of Officers 21313 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Mary Rager along with an article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel entitled, Some Non-Union Government Workers Get Pay Increases to Offset Pension Contributions and requesting that the proposed 2012 benefit plan be re-referred to salaries and grievances for further discussion. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to refer this document to salary and grievances. Second. We have a motion and a second to re-refer to salary and grievances under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. 
Uh, I attended the last salary and grievances meeting when this uh, long discussion took place, uh, many, many minutes on the proposed changes to our employees' pension and, and other benefit package. And uh, uh, I thought it was a very long and thorough discussion, and I really don't see any purpose in referring it back, so I'm not going to support sending it back to salary and grievances. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, we have a motion and a second to refer it back to salary and grievances. An I vote would send it back. A no vote would not. Just to be clear, this is, this is a communication only that you're sending back. You're not sending back the employment right. plan. This is just a communication from Ms. Rager. Correct. No. This would just be the communication. It'll be next. Alder President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess then the document that goes along with it, with it is 13-29. Am I correct? So could we? If you wanted to do something with 13-29, we'd probably make a motion to pull that forward. If I'd make the to. motion to pull that forward and, and include that with document 13-13. Second. We have a motion and a second to pull it forward. Um, Alderperson Kittleson, did you have anything else on that? Well, I, I guess I just wanted to say if we send those two documents back to salary and grievance to uh, discuss one more time, I think <clears throat> that Mary's uh, communication was, was well put together and that uh, if we have one more uh, a chance for the non-reps to talk about it again, sometimes um, when you get things and, and they're thrown at you rather quickly, um, you still would like to digest some of it before uh, you have a chance to, uh, uh, to talk about it. So I, I think that giving them a, a one more chance to, to talk about some of the things in here would, would just uh, uh, be good. So, thank, thank you, you Alderperson Kittleson. Alderman Bourne. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, I'm prepared to vote on 1329. Uh, you know, a lot of the other aldermen weren't at salary and grievance, but we had to have a pretty good contingent there, and it was a very thorough discussion. I'm wondering if our finance director, uh, Jim Amodi, was prepared to uh, uh, discuss tonight with the council what the financial repercussions would be of changing this benefit plan from what it was already proposed. Uh, I believe him and Director Rice have put a lot of time and effort into this, and uh, and as I said, it had a thorough discussion already at salary and grievances. To my satisfaction, anyway, I'm ready to move forward on 1329 and vote on it tonight and pass it. Uh, this has huge implications on our 2012 budget. And I'm afraid we're going back and we're going we're gonna to modify this part of the benefit plan and somebody else is going to want something else, uh, another, another thing, take another look at something else. Uh, I noticed uh, today in the paper that the, uh, the budget is whittled down to about $1.3 million for next year, and then we're gonna start uh, making changes on this benefit plan after they, they spend many, many hours on it. Uh, I think we have to move on and I think we have to approve it. So again, I'm not gonna support sending either one of these to salary and grievances. Is, is Director Amodio uh, prepared to discuss this at all with us tonight? We haven't even pulled it forward yet. No, we had, had a, the discussion is on um, pulling it forward. Um, well, I mean, pulling it forward is, is a pretty basic function. Do we need a vote on pulling a document forward? We don't need a vote on pulling it forward. It's pulled forward. Um, would uh, Alderman Versi, would you have anything to say before Director Amodio speaks? Sure, real quick. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, two quick things. Yeah, we had a very long discussion on this, and we came up with a great compromise with all the benefits that we went through. So we don't need to resend this back to us to come up with the same ideas. Um, the first thing is, is um, well, Director Rice isn't here, but he said we, this is kind of a timely manner to get this done so the people that are thinking about retiring this year know what it's going to be so they have that option. They have to have this sooner than later. This is already pushing it out late enough. Not going another two weeks before we see it again is pushing it out too far for these people that are thinking about retiring. So they need to know their benefits. Another reason why we got this done, completed for tonight. The second part is, you know, if she's concerned about raises, this is why we have a new merit pay plan. 
to base your raises on your merit. So the point is they're getting a raise because of their pension contributions. Well, she can get a raise with her, her, her good merit and her good work that she does already. So those two major things right there are already in place. So we need to get this passed tonight so all those people that are thinking about retiring can get their finalized version in front of them. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Um, I think I'll make it clear Mary Rager is my secretary. Um, and I've told her I don't agree with sending this back to committee. Um, and I'm sure she's watching this evening and probably throwing a brick at her television. But <laughs> Director Amodio? <laughs> Uh, as I understand it, there were uh, two changes that were made in salary and grievance uh, to the original proposed plan. Uh, the first one was on health insurance where uh, employees who chose to leave the city's health insurance plan uh, would receive a one-time payment of $1,200. Uh, the impact on that is very difficult. Uh, I, I think that was an error, actually. I think it's a one-time payment per year. Of $1,200? Yes. Okay. If, if I can ask the person who made the motion. Sure. That was correct. <clears throat> That's yes. correct. Thank you. It's a $1,200 payment per year. Yes. If they choose to leave the city's plan. Correct. Not involving a spouse. Uh, I believe if, if they left the, the plan, yes, that would. That was the, the payment. That would be a payment that the city would make for the spouse leaving the plan. No, for the employee to leave the plan. Okay. The, um, if we look at 2010, which is the data we have for a full year, we had roughly $5.5 million in claims for the city. Uh, that doesn't include any of the administrative or stop loss costs. But uh, we had roughly 1,000 participants, uh, which are the employees and their dependents. So if you take a look at that and divide 1,000 into 5.5 million, our average claim cost per employee in the city is roughly $5,500. Um, unfortunately, in the city, uh, a lot of uh, our employees don't use the medical plan as much as others. We have a small group of employees uh, from the ages of 50 to 65 that are the primary drivers of the health care cost. But if you strictly look at an average, uh, if we paid an employee $1,200 a year to be off our plan, the theoretical savings would be $4,300 based on 2010 actual results. But again, um, the, we wouldn't know the full impact because of the, uh, depending on the employees, their usage of it in that year. If that answers the question. That was the first change. The second change, I believe, uh, if an employee retires and chooses not to use the city health insurance plan, they would be eligible for a 50% payout of their accrued sick leave. Uh, the proposed plan uh, took uh, sick leave and said there wouldn't be any further payouts, but that payout would go towards paying their medical premium. Uh, this change would say that an employee, if they chose not to continue with city insurance after retirement, could get 50% of their accrued sick leave as a cash payout. They would lose the balance However, that is, uh, when that happens, whether it's the employee's choice or not, uh, that event triggers COBRA, and the employee would still be required to be covered for 18 months under the city's plan, even with that payout. Are there any questions? And I guess to calculate what the savings of that would be, we'd be like uh, trying to look at a crystal ball because you don't know who's going to take it and who's not, correct? That's correct. I mean, the average um, accrued benefit is probably in the $20,000 range. Uh, half of that would be $10,000. We'd still have to uh, provide coverage for COBRA, even though the employee would have to pay those premiums. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the primary age for our health insurance exposure is between 52 and a half and 65 years old. And these, these retired employees would be in that category. Again, a good situation for someone who's going on their spouse's insurance or was actually old enough for Medicare or Medicaid or something. That's correct. Any other questions? 
Those are the only two changes. Thank you, Jim. Okay, uh, we have 13, 13 uh, requesting that this be re referred to salary and grievances. We have pulled forward 1329. We have a motion to refer the document 1329 to salary and grievances. Um, so, under discussion on referring this to salary and grievances, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in reviewing these documents, I, I really see two, or I should say, I have two major concerns. Um, one is to do with the workers' comp changes that this proposes, as well as the sick leave payout um, that are proposed in this document. First, to do with the workers' comp um, changes. There are jobs that our employees do that are inherently dangerous. We ask you know, our, our fire personnel and our police personnel to run towards danger and, and oftentimes um, you know, to go help someone. We ask them to do that. They, they gratefully take on that obligation. And I am concerned that those jobs being inherently dangerous, we are now going to change their workers' compensation package to only pay them um, two-thirds of their base pay for if they get injured on the job. Um, I'm concerned about that. Again, they put themselves on the line. If they get hurt while doing a job we ask them to do, serving their community, um, I, I don't think it's fair that we're only paying them two-thirds of their salary for up to six months while they're out doing what we've asked them to do. Um, so I, I'm not in favor of that change. As well as the uh, sick leave payout, I think this more comes down to living up to our agreements and living up to our obligations. I think this is something where um, a plan that has been in place for some time, that people that have worked for the city for some time are depending on this as part of their benefits package. People that are close to retirement now are looking at this as something that is being completely stripped away from them um, without any recourse. This is, again, something that people have worked their career for and are depending on, and now we are just going to end it arbitrarily just because we can save some money on that idea. My concern is, again, it's. Are we living up to our obligations? Are we living up to the agreements that we have made with our employees, people that are depending on these benefits, and we are just cutting it off? We're not sunsetting it. We're not saying for new hires, we're just saying, you know, come contract time or come the time we pass this, th this will no longer be just to save money. So uh, those are my two concerns. I would be in favor of sending this back to salary agreements to hopefully work out some of those issues yet. I realize people have different concerns and people have different views on this, but I would hope that we can come to a better compromise on these two issues. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, the only thing I have to point out is that most every move we make in this city, uh, in these economic times and in these financial times are made for financial reasons. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Um, there is such a thing as, uh, as standing up to, uh, for our obligations and standing up for our employees, which I feel we do. However, we have something called economic reality that we're facing. It's called a budget deficit. It's called uh, something that will uh, uh, repeat itself year after year after year. Uh, what we fix today will not carry on over to next year. If we don't fix it now, we face the same dilemma every budget year in the, in the, in the future. On the sick leave payout, um, we, the, the sick leave can be paid out in insurance credits for being applied to the individual's insurance, correct, Jim? Uh, it's just they can't take it as a cash benefit upon retirement. So it's not like we're stripping them of their, of their money. Um, but everything we do in this city in these times is done for economic reasons. If we were living uh, off the fat of the land right now, we wouldn't have to make the decisions that we're making, but it, we have to make the tough decisions. And we have to do it now because every year in the future that we don't do something now, and this is not drastic in my opinion, um, it's not drastic. Is it significant? Yes, it is. But it's not drastic, but it's something that needs to be done because if it's not done this year, we face the same problem that carries over from year to year to year. Decisions being made now, we may not reap the real benefits from them for five years in the future but the decisions have to be made in order to reap those benefits. President Rindfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess to echo some of the sentiments you just stated, uh, but also to echo what I had stated in Committee of the Whole when this came forward uh, the first time around. Um, if we change the mentality a little bit, instead of looking at this document as a change uh, from 
a really good benefits program to a horrible benefits program. If those that are employed in the uh, private sector would look at this list uh, upon hire and say, here's your list of benefits. If you just look at the column under proposed, uh, even the amended one, I think it's a phenomenal list of benefits that we offer. Now, is it a change from something that's better? Absolutely. But even as proposed, I think most people in the, public in the private sector would accept happily these benefits. They're still better than what people are getting in the private sector, I maintain. Um, so if we look at that you know, in that mentality, it's something that we have to perhaps do a better job educating uh, the, the employees that are most affected by this. But I do think that if, if, if they sat back and compared that to any other thing in the private, benefit plan in the private sector, they'd still see that's a superior uh, to that. A second comment that I just want to reiterate again is that ultimately we're not making these changes for our own benefit uh, as a body, as, as of council and as mayor. Uh, we're placeholders. We're the chairman of the board for the actual employers, and the actual employers are the residents of the city of Sheboygan. Um, it is for them that the city employees work and provide services, um, but it is from them that they get paid. It's not, it's not my checkbook. I mean, it's my portion of my checkbook through my property taxes, but it's the full city paying that as well. And the employer do not have the ability to maintain um, this, the better benefits packages that we have, have been offering. They simply can't sustain that anymore. Um, and in the private sector, uh, when you have an unsustainable budget, bankruptcies occur. Well, we don't have that option. We just can't go under and let someone else do the job. We have a, a responsibility to provide a balanced budget, a responsibility uh, to the actual employers to make sure that their, their money is being used appropriately and wisely. Uh, and so I urge you not to refer this back. I refer I urge the council to vote upon this today, uh, even as amended, pass it, uh, so that the retirees have an idea of if they choose to retire or not, they know what their benefits package would be. Thank you. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. Okay, I have no more lights up here. Um, there is no further discussion. Uh, the vote is on referring this back, document number 1329, referring it back to salary and grievances. An I vote will send it back. A no vote, it will remain uh, to be voted upon its passage as is, which will be a separate vote. And also 1313. And also 1313 on sending 1313 to salary and grievances, correct? Both of them to be referred back to salaries. Right. Okay. Roll call, please. Everybody clear on what? Okay. Bourne? No. Carlson? No. Uh, Hammond? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Bercy? No. And Belt? No. Three ayes, 11 noes. Okay, the document uh, stays where it's at. Uh, seeing as we're dealing with this document, I will look for a motion on 1329. President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you. I move the, put the uh, report of committee uh, to be ex uh, 1329 to be accepted and adopted uh, as amended. Is that correct? For those in salary grievances. Uh, and then the uh, report of officer, document number 1313, to be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt, and a motion to accept and place on file. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess I do need to, to clean up the language um, and add after the $1,200 um, per year as it was initially uh, proposed in the salary and grievance. Okay, now this uh, language is on which document? This is on um, 1329. On 1329 under the health insurance. It says where employees who choose to leave the city health insurance plan will receive a one-time payment of $1,200, I believe it was meant to be per year after that. It was initially proposed as a $100 per month, and at that point okay. in time, it was asked and, to be in a lump To sum. receive a one-time payment, so it should be to receive an annual sure. payment of $1,200, and that annual payment obviously would be well that person is not on the insurance Correct. policy. Correct. Does that make sense to everybody? Is that a motion okay. to amend that? Yes, please. Do we have a second on that motion? 
Second. We have a motion and a second to amend it where the bottom line uh, written a little bolder than the rest will read, employee who chooses to leave the city health insurance plan would receive an annual payment of $1,200. Okay, um, now this, that's just a, does everybody agree that that is, is simply a, a, a typo error, or do we want to vote on that amendment? Okay, we have no disagreement, so we'll call that a typo. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second to place the amended document with the uh, grammatical change upon its passage. Under further discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Reisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Ursi? Aye. Felt? Aye. And Bourne? Aye. 12 eyes, two no's. Motion carries. Okay, moving back to 1314, reports of officers two, by the City Plan Commission recommending annexing territory owned by the city to the city of Sheboygan. City Plan Commission, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage and that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kahn? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Resolutions introduce three. 1325 by Alderperson Kittleson, officially recognizing the Ellis Historic Neighborhood Association. Alderperson Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. I think you missed, you missed a bunch. Oh. A bunch. I just missed uh, nine documents oh, here, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Uh, 1315 through 1324 to be referred. <laughs> Sorry, Jean. <laughs> Didn't actually miss them, I just missed to refer them. Okay, Jean, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderperson Kittleson. Under discussion. Well, this is really uh, wonderful. Officially recognizing the Ellis Historic Neighborhood Association. We have another neighborhood association. This is uh, the second one, I believe. And uh, it's, it's just, it's a good thing. We're really excited and happy that neighborhood associations are taking off as they are. As, as you stated, we met with the Cooper Cleveland people, Erie Hill. Um, this is, it's really, it's great. And this neighborhood has Connor Fennessy in it, which is even better. Yeah. Better <laughs> watch out. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Any further discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. You can do it all, I think. all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Sue. Yeah. Reports of Committee 6, 1326, by law and licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license application number 8316, based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, his record as an habitual law violator, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. Is Nassar Jaber here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Um, we invited him to our meeting, um, to our committee meeting twice. He did not show our call, so we denied the license. Very good. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson, or Alderperson Vanderweel, excuse me. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Hammond, or I'm sorry, Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kass? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 14 ayes. 
Motion carries. 1327 by Public Work rec rec Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Mike Vandersteen stating that the request by the Rotary Clubs for the use of Evergreen Park as the site of a Christmas lights project seriously challenges the continuation of the ski trail project. Public Works, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, could I take uh, 1328 with it? They're, they're both related. Sure, 1328 uh, is a communication from the Rotary Club uh, to utilize Evergreen Park and the Quarry Shelter commencing in 2012 for the Christmas Lights Project. Take those together? Yes, please. Uh, before, uh, well, I'll make a motion uh, to the, the report of committee be placed on file, uh, but I would, I would like to take the suggestion of Mr. Uh, uh, one of the people at the, uh, uh, Mr. Vandersteen at the public forum, that this agreement, uh, we should probably add, add that on the end of 1328, mm -hmm. that this is an approval for one year, and it'll be revisited by the Public Works Committee in the spring of 2013. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, that this approval will be for the year 2012 and it will be revisited for the year 2013 by the Public Correct. Works Committee. Correct. That's that, what, that's that was the understanding of the Public Works Committee and I'm, I'm glad Mr. Vandersteen brought it to our attention. It should have been in the document and wasn't. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, um, can we do roll call on these? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Abstain. One abstention. Yeah. By a Rotarian. And non-skier. <laughs> it's downhill. <laughs> <laughs> not well either. No one is not okay. Okay, uh, 1329 we've already disposed of. Report of Committee 8. 1330 by Public Works recommending authorized entering into contract with Sheboygan County Highway Department for the ditching and resurfacing of portions of South 16th Street, Pheasant Lane, and Maple Lane and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted and the uh, substitute general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Substitute resolution. Substitute resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Heideman. Under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Koss? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Winflesh? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Common? Aye. And Hammond. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees nine. 1331 by salary and grievances recommending creating division five of chapter three of article three of chapter two of the municipal code relating to the position of chief administrative officer and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Alderman Boren. Nope, I apologize. Old light. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to pull forward documents 1240 and 1241, considering that they are very similar, and I'd like to do those first, please. You would like to take 1240 and 1241 before 1331 is what you're saying? Correct. Okay, 1240, matters laid over. RC number 183.11.12 by Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 24.11.12 by Alder Persons Hammond and Raisler, creating Div Div Division 5 of Article 3 of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code relating to the position of Chief Administrative Officer. Um, we will take uh, 1240. Do you, would, would you like to, Alderman Hammond, do you have something on 1240? Um, just in general, Your Honor. Please. Um, all four of these documents, uh, 32, 31, 41, and 40, all are relatively the same document. Um, I would ask that we take them all together. Uh, okay. Because I think there will be components of each that may be. Okay. I will read, them, read through them all once, and we will take them all together. 
1241, RC number 184.11.12 by Committee of the Whole, blah, 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 by Alderman Raisler, Hammond and Raisler, amending section 2975 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to add or delete positions in the Mayor's Office and the Finance Department TO recommends that the ordinance be passed and the job description for the Chief Administrative Officer be amended as follow. Under reports to Mayor and Common Council and throughout the body of the document to be replaced with reports to Common Council with input from the Mayor recommends passing the attached ordinance. That is 1241. Then we will go back to 1231 and 2. 1231 I've already read or 1331 I've already read, excuse me, and 1332 by salary and grievances amending section 2975 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to add delete positions in the mayor's office and the finance department table of organization. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I talked with uh, City Clerk Sue Richards before the meeting regarding 1240 and 41 and I was going to, uh, the city clerk uh, recommended that I file 1240 and 41, uh, depending on what happened with 1331 and 1332, because there are some differences in the language. The original documents that came out of uh, the Committee of the Whole were changed in salary and grievances. So if, if 1231 and 32 pass, then I was going to make a motion to just file 40 and 41. That's what Madam City Clerk recommended. Only because... Um 1331, Alderman Van Akron, and 1332 have the substitute ordinance, the newest one, 40 and 41. So it just depends on which one of these you want to take first. Correct. That's why I'd like to do 40 and 41 first. Okay. Because they uh, are different. They are different. If, if I may have some input on this one. Um, on 1241, and uh, hear me out on this, please. Under reports to Mayor and Common Council and throughout the body of the document to be replaced with, with reports to Common Council with input from the Mayor. Um, I would like to uh, have a discussion on that. And here is why. Um, to have a, basically the uh, administrative officer of the city reporting to the Common Council with input from the Mayor uh, structurally um, is a disaster. Um, myself uh, being right now, uh, every Monday morning I have a department head meeting. That department head meeting is with all of the department heads of the city. If we are to have a chief administrative officer in the city, um, now I know that the way this is designed is the chief administrative officer will become what is now the finance director, will become the chief administrative officer. Being the mayor of the city, every one of my days begins, my first conversation in City Hall uh, begins with what is now the finance director who is basically doing the job of the chief administrative officer of the city. That's where my day starts. That's where we have coffee and we discuss what's going on today and, and what needs to be done. Um, to have that person report to the Common Council or the President of the Common Council doesn't work. Because if that person who the mayor deals with every day, and I can say I, and I can refer to that person as right now Director Jim Amodio, but if you take Mayor Ryan out of it and Jim Amodio out of it and call it the <coughs> mayor and the chief administrative officer, personalities aside, um, you can't have that individual reporting to a body that is less than part-time at best uh, because the council does not know exactly what happens on day-to-day -day activities in the city with the department heads of the city um, and especially this position being the most important position in the city. Um, a good example of this, and I hate to open up old wounds, but Angela Payne. Um, when Angela Payne was the HR director of the city, HR director of the city, um, and there was 
word that she was going to be terminated when Mayor Perez was the former mayor. Um, a lot of people in this council, and some of them, some of you are still here, I know I am, um, came to her defense saying that we believe she was doing a great job, uh, that we believe that uh, she you know, should, be, should not be terminated. I myself went to Mayor Perez and said that uh, I didn't believe that she should be terminated and I would hope he wouldn't do that. Not knowing that her performance was subpar and viewed as subpar by most people in the city at that time. Being on the council and not working with everybody in the city every day, I didn't know. Nor did some people who are on this council right now. We didn't know. Um, to have the person that is holding the chief administrative position in the city report only to the council is structurally not going to work because the council will not know one way or the other if that person is doing a, on a daily basis a good job or not. So that is my input on it. I have no problem with it reporting to the mayor and the council, but to have it only report to the council with input from the mayor, in my opinion, um, and that is not me, Bob Ryan, the mayor. I'm talking any future mayor and any future chief administrative officer. Structurally, it doesn't work. Alderman Hammond. Old light. It was an old light. Old light? Yes. Okay. Alderman Raisler? Old light? Old light. <laughs> Alderman Sampson, old light? New light. New light. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> just got a couple notes here. I, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to go back to my original position on this. I just, going through the process of this whole city administrator, going through the timing of it, um, the rate of speed at which it's getting escalated through the process, my initial thought was no. I, I oppose a city administrator position. I'm going back to that original position, and here's why. So tonight I'm opposing the city administrator position, uh, because number one, I just don't agree with it. Uh, just going off of a couple things that the mayor was saying. Um, right now, the structure of our government is we have a mayor and a common council structure. Mayor is elected, common council is elected by the people. Um, if you add in the city administrator, the city administrator isn't voted on by the public, even though it's, it's appointed and, and a lot of the authority and the control is given by the council who's elected, we still take away a lot of power from the vote, from the voters. Um, right now we have a system of checks and balances. We have the mayor in place, the mayor appoints people, they come in front of the common council, we can vet them, we can, we can interview, we can do whatever we need to do that we feel fit to do. Uh, we, can, we can vote to approve or disapprove. With the city administrator, you lose that system of checks and balances, I, I feel. Again, uh, what you're doing, you, you do two things by bringing in a city administrator. Number one, you give one individual a tremendous amount of power, a tremendous amount of power. Uh, and then, it's, then you grant a, a lot of power to a very few certain number of people. Number one, it's the common council here of 16. But then you, you, you filter that down even more, the evaluation process, I guess a disciplinary process is taken on by three people, the president, vice president, and the chairman of the committee of the whole. So you, you've greatly diluted now the power of the vote and you've increased greatly the control of this council. Uh, I just feel that's a huge disservice to our constituents, the people that, uh, that vote for us. Uh, we're attempting to make this change Another reason for this, for me opposing this tonight, is we're, we're attempting to make a change by taking out the voice of the public, not taking it to a referendum. I think a position of this magnitude deserves public input. We're going to take away a lot of the vote, voting power. Let's give it back to the people. Let the people decide. We had a survey that we haven't heard any results from that were supposed to help us determine what the city wanted. We haven't seen or heard any of those results yet, officially. I can't make a decision on what the people want if the survey that we had was supposed to tell us what the people wanted. And if city administrator was one of them, then fine, let the people tell us if they want it. If that's what they want, then I say we give it to them. And, and, and finally here, no matter what decisions are made in, in the current structure that we have, 
or if we add a city administrator. I believe all the decisions come through the council. So if the, if the mayor has decisions or, or has, has a different agenda or if he's got things he wants to look at, or the city administrator has certain things they want to they do, they still ultimately come through the common council. So if we had a mayor who was brilliant or a city administrator that was brilliant in saving money, we still have to make decisions on whether we cut services, cut people, save money here. Save. So this, this body of 16 still has to vote. And I've seen in a number of occasions uh, where sometimes we just don't make the right decisions. So money's not saved, positions are saved, but we still spend a lot of money. So ultimately the decisions still come through the county council uh, and we're all still here. The same people are still in place, so I don't understand where this miraculous savings of money is going to come from by keeping all the same people in, in places just by changing some titles. It's just not going to happen. I don't see it. So going back to my original uh, decision, I'm going to oppose uh, anything to do with the city administrator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Hammond, New Light. New Light. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick clarification for either... Uh, Ms. Richards, or your, which documents are we actually, are we on, did we pull 40 and 41, or what we? Did we did pull, yeah, we're working we on. We have pulled them, we're working on all of them together. I can't, I can't. But initially we pulled 40 and 41 right now. Okay, 40 and 41 it is. Thank you. Um, first off, I, you know, Alderman Sampson, I do respect your opinion, however, would respectfully disagree. Um, we don't vote, the citizens and taxpayers don't vote on the Department of Public Works head. They don't depart, vote on the finance director when we hired that individual, which is arguably the most influential position in the city um, or any city government. Um, the citizens don't vote on that. They don't vote who's going to be our development director. They don't vote who's going to be our recreation director. They don't vote on any other positions other than the 17 of us, 18, 19 of us sitting in this room. They charge us with making those types of decisions. Um, Everything that is relatively controversial does not need to go to referendum, in my opinion. Um, the checks and balances still exist. Um, having a chief administrative officer um, does not get rid of those checks and balances. It just has somebody inside City Hall that's focusing on the day-to-day -day activities so we can focus on policy and other things that the city needs for us. Um, again, um, I think the city administrator, chief administrative officer, whatever title we want to put on it, um, does a couple things. One, it ensures some continuity in government because you're absolutely right. This body changes. Um, the mayor's position changes. Um, and we need somebody inside of there that knows what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis and representing the council. Um, and again, I go back to the efficiency of, of well, where this goes. Again, the, this body, um, the mayor, can be focusing on uh, policy, economic development, those types of things. The city administrator, chief administrative officer, can be focusing on some of the more, um, um, I hate to say the word mundane because nothing's mundane, but daily tasks. Daily tasks, thank you. Some of the daily tasks inside City Hall. So I would encourage people to, to support this. Um, I think uh, this is a great form of government. Um, many communities our size have, have done this um, to much success. So um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. President Rinfleisch, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, having studied various issues and having actually studied myself uh, and, and got an education in, in municipal government, um, many of the issues uh, that, that Alderman Sampson brought up come up constantly. Uh, I think that's probably just a, a, a poor job of marketing and what the position is. To uh, try to sum up years and years of study the city has done, uh, there's a city manager which does create some of the problems that Alderman Sampson uh, brings up. One person is empowered, is, does not report to the voters necessarily. That is in, by no stretch of imagination what's been proposed right here. Uh, that's by state statute, we're not doing that. What we are doing is what Alderman Hammond had pointed out, is working with changing our own administrative structure, uh, which we do on a regular basis. Um, it's not a change of government, and it does not take away um, <clears throat> the public's right to make policy via their elected officials. In fact, I think it, it creates more opportunity for uh, policy changes. It allows, uh, we know development is a big issue uh, with you, uh, Mr. Ryan. It allows this current mayor, for example, to focus on redevelopment, uh, sit in the meetings and deal with that issue. Holy line on taxes is my issue. It allows me to create policies that do that. The administrative officer then is simply the one that we direct to do the work on our <coughs> behalf and report to us, just like any other 
uh, employ um, that are out there. There are supervisors that have supervisor control. You have goals you have to meet. You have personalities that have to, to, have to click. Um, and, and it's an employee of this body that gets the stuff done. Uh, the, not the mundane, but the daily tasks. I think he uses a good word for that. Um, it, it allows then the, 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 the voice of the people um, when policy changes are required uh, that we can focus on the policy changes. We can debate those policy changes. We can investigate those policy changes. Um, the other question brought up is where does the savings come from? And that's just it. The, the, the savings do come from not the city administrator doing what they like to do, the city administrator, as we know, does not create policy, does not direct policy at all. It can certainly make recommendations to us to create policy, um, but that's where it is. What's working in other locations? What's worked in the private industry? What's worked in other cities with administrators um, that we may not be aware of? Um, do the investigation, do the background, do the history, give us the pros and give us the cons and allow us to make a decision from there. Um, because as you say, we are less than part time in this body here as, as common council. Uh, we rely on uh, our own individual abilities to research uh, and come up with new ideas. Um, and I think we do a pretty good job at that. But I don't think we are ultimately pushing the, the, the new ideas that, that are out there and bring them into our city because we don't have the administrative officer at this point in time. Uh, that's where the savings comes from. Um, people still have their say in policy. That doesn't, doesn't change. Is it a change of government? Absolutely not. We're not a city manager. We're just changing the administrative structure here. Uh, and thirdly, I think we're actually empowering ourselves even more. So for those three reasons, I say uh, support the city administrator at this point in time, move forward. Uh, I can tell you after years and years of, of discussion, I think the, the public is in general supporting that. To back up with this, since we do have four documents, uh, and we know we have pulled 12, 40, and 41 first, I think we need to have some language on the table that we're starting with. Um, as the mayor pointed out, some, some discussion on a particular item on that change, but we haven't even brought really the fourth, the full d document yet. So I guess in that, with knowing that, I'd like to put 1240, the report of committee, uh, to be accepted and adopted, and the general ordinance be put upon its passage, obviously subject to any, to any uh, amendments that, that are necessary at that point in time. At least it gives us a starting point, and then we can add things in if we need to. So you are uh, looking at 1240? Uh, 1240. I want to show the right one. I believe 1240 is the right 40 one. 40 and 41. 40 and 41. <coughs> I, um, that okay, now 41, is that specifically? 40, is 40. That specifically dealing with the amendments to the reports to the mayor or not yes. reports to the mayor? Exactly, that is 1241, uh, which I discussed briefly. Okay. Like, I'd say so, I'd still like to bring briefly. 1240 first to have a set language. And then if we, because we'll, there's multiple changes between the four documents, uh, and my vision here is to have a, have a base language, and then if you want to add 1241 in as amendments or some other documents, that's fine. Um, but even if we do, we can't do 1240 and 41 because there's two okay. documents. Alderman Bourne, I see some frustration on your face. Would you like to uh, thank, thank you, take Mayor it Ryan. up from there? Uh, 1240 and 41 were discussed at length at the Committee of the Whole, but it was a, it was a dual referral to the Salary and Grievance Committee. Uh, the 1230 and 31 and 32 are totally different from 1240 and 41. Uh, I would not support 1240 and 41 as came out of the Committee of the Whole. I would support documents 1331 and 1332. Again, the Salary and Grievance Committee last Monday night spent great length of time kind of tweaking what 1240 and 41 were into 12, 1331 and 1332. I fully support 1331 and 1332. My recommendation on 40 and 41 would be to file them and uh, pass the report of committee on 31 and 32. That would be my recommendation. There was a long discussion at salary and grievance last Monday uh, and a number of the aldermen were there that weren't on the committee that had input. And where 13 and 30, 31 and 32 are not perfect documents, uh, there's a couple things that I'd like to see in there that aren't, but I think you know, it's, they're good documents compared to 40 and 41. If you, if you pass 40 and 41, you're basically negating 31 and 32 because it's a cleaned up version of, of 1240 and 41. So, I would make a motion to file 1240 and 41. Second. 
Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I don't have a problem with uh, discussing 13, uh, 31 and 32, but I would think we'd want to have a conversation on those before we filed 40 and 41, considering that the Salaries and Grievances Committee was not the whole body of the council, the committee of the whole, obviously, minus the mayor, everybody was there and had input on that document. So um, I would ask that uh, uh, people hold off on that uh, of filing 40 and 41 until we get through 30. Okay. One what, what we have us for, before us right now is a motion to file 40 and 41. We will limit the discussion to filing 40 and 41. If anybody wants to speak on filing or not filing 40 or 41, um, I'm going to turn off all of the lights on that right now uh, that I have up here. And if you would like to speak on filing of 40 and 41, um, or if we would just like to take a vote on 40 and 41, um, it is under discussion at the moment. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the glaring differences that I see in 41 and 40 and 31 and 32 is the eliminating of the finance director positions. Um, the, the reason I won't support 31 and 32 is because those documents do not eliminate the position of finance director out of the table of organization. That's my understanding. If I'm, if I'm wrong, by all means, no, I, correct I me. believe they do. Alderman Horn. Uh, I would ask Alderman Riesler, my understanding was is that the finance director was still going to stay on the TO with uh, 1331 and 1332. That was my understanding. You're, you're correct, and it will just remain uh, open like it's many other be, positions. It's going to be on the, the TO and open. As I said, it, it, it doesn't um, eliminate that position from the table of organization. Now, we can say it's going to stay open, it's not going to stay open. It's very easy to fill an open position when it's sitting there. The reason I support 1240 and 1241 is because by eliminating that position, you are having instantaneous savings. You're, you're getting those savings right off the table of organization instantly. You're not looking for potential savings by bringing a chief administrator officer in. You're getting those savings up front plus any potential savings that that person can find. So. I don't support keeping the finance director position on the table of organization and then adding a six-figure salary package to our table of organization, and that is what we're doing. Um, I can't support, in, in our budget time that the mayor has pointed out several times today already, I can't support adding a six-figure salary package to our table of organization if we're not going to be eliminating others. The idea of 1240 and 1241, as it was discussed at the Committee of the Whole, is to consolidate some of those director positions to make it more cost effective, to make city government more efficient and affordable, and that's why I support those documents. But I do not support 31 and 32. Um, as Alderman Bourne pointed out, they are drastically different, and the drastic differences, again, to me, seem to be the, the elimination of the finance director position off the table of organization. If we do that, you get that cost effectiveness immediately off the table of organization, plus any potential savings that a chief administrator officer can find. I support 1240 and 1241, and I would recommend that we move forward with those as discussed at the Committee of the Whole meeting. Yeah, it was my understanding, um, and I was not in on the Committee of the Whole meeting, so I apologize, but uh, not part of the Committee of the Whole, um, that the finance director position would be eliminated. Correct. Right? That, was, that was what my belief was, and that's why I support this, it makes sense, to leave a director's position open in the city um, and create a new position to add, you know, for a, a six-figure salary here, um, and then leave that other position open. Doesn't make sense to me either, but it's under discussion. Alderman Carlson. Going along the same lines as Alderman Van Akron and um, Alderman Hammond here, I think that we, um, before we go with any vote to file 40 and 41, we need to discuss uh, 31 and 32 a little bit more because once again, I, I will not support adding another six-figure salary to this, to the city because obviously our budget came out today and I, I think that would just be um, ridiculous. Alderman Boren, did you have anything else on this? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, 1332, uh, section three says, the current finance director treasurer is hereby appointed to the interim Chief Financial Officer, effective 10, 11, 10, 10, 11. Uh, so we're not creating another six-figure salary. The uh, current uh, finance director will slide into that position on an interim basis. Now that could be, that could be months before we uh, go out and do a nationwide search for a, uh, for a, for a ch uh, Chief Administrative Officer 
or uh, city administrator. Uh, so we're not creating another six-figure salary. He's merely sliding over into that position on an interim basis. And, uh, and as I said before, uh, the finance director is still on the TO, but it's not filled because he's sliding over to the other position. Thank you. To take your finance director, turn him into an interim chief administrative officer or city administrator, leave the finance director's position open and saying that we're going to go out in X amount of months and it, to me it sounds like a, a recipe for instability to say the least. Um, why would you appoint somebody as an interim on an interim basis in this position, leave the other position open and then, then you, what, you're going to go out on a nationwide search, find somebody for the chief administrative officer position and then take your former chief administrative officer and put him, it, it, I mean, the whole idea of this is to build some stability into government here. Um, to do this thing with interim positions and leave this one open, move this guy here, let's move him back, hire somebody else in the future. Um, even to make it an interim position, in my opinion, is a recipe for disaster. Why do you want to create a position and make it an interim position? Makes no sense to me. That's my opinion, and I can at least have some input on this one. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, just to clarify the, uh, the position being open, uh, I, I think we have, uh, I think we talked at the meeting several, if not a half a dozen positions that are currently open that are not filled. So it's not like we're having these positions where t tomorrow the salary and grievance committee just decides to, to fill the finance director position. Uh, this has to come back to committee for anything that would be filled and we'd all have input on any of the vacant positions that would be filled. Thanks. Uh, point of order. Are we still discussing filing 4041? Because I think we've gotten off on a, a tangent a little bit here. Yes, that's the motion on the floor. Motion on the floor is to file 40 and 41. Any further discussion on 40 and 41? We will take a vote simply on filing or not filing 40 and 41, if everybody's okay with that, so we can get through that. Everybody okay with that? I'm going to turn off the lights. The next discussion, we are going to take a vote on filing. We have a motion to file and a second on filing 1240 and 1241. An I vote will file it. A no vote will not. Everybody good with that? Roll call, please. Kath. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? No. Warren? Aye. Carlson? No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Aye. Nine eyes, five noes. Motion carries, documents are filed. Now, we will discuss 13, 31, and 32. We have 13, 31, and 13, 32. Uh, do we have any motions on these documents yet? Does anybody recall that far back, Sue? We need to. I don't think so. There's no motion right now. Okay, there's no motion. Um, do we have a motion? Uh, what we are going to do, um, one of these uh, is creating Division 5 of Article 3 of Chapter 2 relating to the position of Chief Administrative Officer and passing the attached substitute ordinance. The other is amending 2975 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to add or delete positions in the Mayor's Office and Finance Department Table of Organization. Do we have a motion on these documents? No. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RCs be accepted and adopted and that the substitute ordinance be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> discussion. Under discussion, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have uh, one friendly amendment to make, um, again, another uh, clerical error that was not addressed uh, at salaries and grievance. On the uh, fourth page. Which document? Uh, 31, I'm sorry. 1331, the fourth page. Um, the last paragraph uh, should have uh, deleted the term of the office shall be for five years, but, 
And the second uh, sentence should start with the holder may be removed by the common council at its pleasure. Three fourths vote for the council. I'm sorry, where it's are you? Where actually, are you the Which? second page. It's the second. substitute. It, right, the second. Yep. Uh, of the, of the ordinance itself, yes. The second time. page being section two dash three forty one appointment and term. Appointment and term, okay. correct. And you want to, that to read? Uh, take delete the term of office shall be for five years, comma, but and then start the new uh, sentence with the holder may be removed by the common council, and the rest um, yeah. has some deletions as well. Is that a motion? Yes, that's, that's a friendly second. amendment. Second, I know. I, I, Okay. I, I see it, but what is the gist of it? Just take this part out. The term of office should be five years. Ago. That whole sentence comes out, and that's just the. So the term is out. So there's no term of office on this right. position. Right. So this would then be a permanent. It would be an at will employee, is what you're saying? That, that was a discussion of the salaries and grievance. Um, obviously, Mr. Modio still has a contract with us to the city as well. Okay, so that will just read, uh, Chief Administrative Officer shall be appointed by the Common Council with input from the right. Mayor. The holder may be removed by the Common Council at pleasure by a three-fourths vote of the Common Council. Correct. Correct. Okay. So we're talking the amendment. That is a, an amendment, a friendly amendment. Um, under discussion on the amendment only. Only discussing the amendment. All the person Kittleson, any, anybody on the amendment? We will take a vote on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. We will do a roll call vote on the amendment. All right. This is the amendment only. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Rindfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Are you sure? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving it. Back over there now. Wow. Go <laughs> here, are you sure? <laughs> sorry. Hammond? No. no. I'm sorry, no? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Aye. Nine eyes, five no's. Uh, motion carries. So we are discussing uh, the substitute resolution as amendment, as amended, under discussion. I have Alderperson Kittleson. No, I'm First lights, old light. Old light, thank Anybody you. Anybody new light? Alderman Versi, new light? Old light? Old light. Alderman Hammond, new light? I'm new. New light, all right. Um, I'm going to take, uh, I guess, both of them. First off, under the uh, section we just amended, um, during sellers and, in sellers and grievances, we, uh, I guess a little bit of history, the original documentation had our finance director as the um, chief administrator officer filling out the remaining portion of his term, and that's how the initial um, document was able to keep this relatively cost neutral. Um, through the amendment process, it became uh, an interim position under, and keeping the finance director position open meant he could slide into that and then slide back. The challenge with that is by having to slide back means we've hired a city administrator at somewhere around $150,000 of salary, somewhere in the next two to three years, whether it's this year or next year, at some point he still needs to slide back into that home for the remaining portion of his term. So to indicate that, well, we're going to go out for a national search, it may be months or maybe years, and there's not going to be any cost is foolish because there will be a cost to that because you're going to have to pay that city administrator in addition to the finance director. So I'm asking that we put back in the language that um, uh, was struck and that basically was lined out here um, that uh, we put that language back in and in additional under well, 13... Alderman, Alderman Hammond, can you tell me what document you're looking at and what oh. lines? Mm -hmm. so we're Sorry, 1331. Okay, and... Uh, under the substitute resolution. Which, which is which page? Sub substitute ordinance. Um, I guess that would be what, uh, page four? Second, Second page. Of the substitute. Under the appointment and terms. The one we just, yep. the one we just amended. The one we just changed. Yep, the one we just the changed. appointment and term, okay. Okay. Apparently I got a, need one of those little bouncy balls. We're just, just trying to keep track. Sure. Not that we get confused in this, in this council chamber. I so. Yeah. so anyways, um, we're at, uh, there's a period there now provided, however, that the initial appointee's term shall, be expire, shall expire 22 August, sorry, August 22nd, 2015. 
and set a point you may be removed only for cause yet you know the area that is lined out on everybody's document I would ask that we original ordinance on the original. you wanted that added oh. back into the substitute ordinance correct thank you I got it that's I'm sorry. that master's degree coming to work right there. okay so the um, okay what well, we have the lines and hash marks through here Provided, however, the initial appointee's term shall expire August 22, 2015, and said appointee may be removed only for cause by a three-fourths vote of the Common Council of the term cause, as used in this subsection is defined as inefficiency, neglect of duty, official misconduct, or malfeasance in office. Correct. That is what you would like added back in. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and we under 1332, because they kind of go hand in hand, so if you people would, if everybody would just bear with me. Under Section 3, it says the current finance Director Treasurer is hereby appointed as the Interim Chief Administrative Officer effective 10 10 11. Again, for the same reasons I just reiterated, um, I would ask that we strike the term interim um, and have the current Finance Director Treasurer appointed as the Chief Administrative Officer effective 10 10 to fill out the remaining portion of his appointment um, with the city. Um, again, you know, keeping in mind that over the last year, he's been doing many of those same job duties already, just in an informal and unofficial capacity. Um, and secondly, when Mr. Amodio was hired, I think we need to duly note that he was hired based off of a national search for the, what would, is arguably, again, the most influential position inside of city government. We hired national search, 30 resumes, qualified resumes were, were found or received. Civil Service Commission narrow, interviewed five, and then the mayor, and we ultimately appointed Mr. Amodio. So there was a national search with people that had both municipal and private sector experience, and we chose the one with the private sector experience. So my, uh, my recommendation again, or my amendment is to um, remove the term interim, add back the paragraph, and so we can um, fill this position and move forward. Thank you. I'll second Thank you. both Thank you. those motions. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, two motions, two seconds. We are under discussion on this discussion right now is involved with the amendment um, presented by Alderman Hammond. Um, I agree with Alderman Hammond. Um, Director Amodio has been basically doing this position in an unofficial capacity. Uh, the only difference between this and what he does now is now when he goes to a director or a manager in the city and says, I need something. If they don't give it to him, he calls me and says, call this person and tell him to give me this. I need this information. Um, this will eliminate some of that. But uh, he is plenty capable. Um, and uh, basically over the last year that he has been here has taken on a lot of these duties and responsibilities in an unofficial capacity. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Fully support these amendments um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, going back to what uh, we have discussed already in terms of we're, we're not creating a six-figure salary because we're siding him into an interim position, but that position will be filled. I mean, it's just foolish to think that it won't be. <coughs> so that the finance director, he would once again be the finance director and then we'd have a brand new six-figure salary. But if we're implying that we're not gonna refill that, why would we make it interim? That just makes me think that it's, there's personal issues. And I, I think we need to move past that. If we want to talk about stability here at City Hall and here in the, in the city, we can't have an interim position and we have to have a five-year contract with calls for removal only based on malfeasance or what have you. But to have too many unknowns out there, it's not going to do any good, anything good for the city. We need the stability. Mr. Modio has already been, has a proven track record. As Don Hammond said, he's been vetted. He went through the Civil Service, um, Civil Service um, Commission He's been doing the job already. We need, to, we need to move forward with this. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. I think your key word there is stability. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Several things. Um, the, one of the reasons why we struck a lot of this stuff um, was because, well, I'll start off with the interim position that we were going for. The reason why we're going for an interim position and leaving open the finance director's position, because either way what happens here, if we went out for a national search for, for a city administrator or chief executive officer and we have to, we have that position eliminated, Mr. Modio still gets paid out for the rest of his contract, the rest of his appointment. So either way, we're going to be paying him. 
So his position is left open for him to slide back into his position for the remainder of his term. And with that national search, yeah, we did do a national search for a finance director, not for a city administrator. So that's a big difference in qualifications, whether he has them or not, which you know, he does have great qualifications, but we didn't do a national search for a city administrator. We did a national search for a finance director. So I mean, that becomes an issue in itself. Um, leaving it as interim is so he can fill that position like he's doing a great job already, but we still have the stability once we get that city administrator, maybe he qualifies. He can put his resume in with the rest of the national search and see if it compares. But it's still fairness to the citizens that we do that national search for a city administrator. Um, the re back to why we struck this out was because of that reason. And to have no term is so it's an at-will employee. You give, an, you give the city administrator a five-year term, you know how hard it's going to be to get rid of him if he's not doing his job correctly or the citizens don't like the job he's doing? That's why we got rid of the term. You do a nat will employee year for year, you can get rid of him if he's not doing his job. A lot easier than quasi-judicial hearing for the city administrator. You do a year for year, you don't do a five-year appointment, so we can do it on his merit. You can, if he's meeting all of, all of his, his uh, requirements that he's doing for us, there's no reason for him, us to even look at it. He'll have the job forever, there's no appointment. So those are the several things that, the reasons why we struck them out originally and created the document 1331 versus 1340. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bercy. <coughs> Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to support either one of uh, Alderman Hammond's uh, motions. Uh, the, uh, the committee that worked on this, I believe Alderman Vanderwilly and Alderman Heideman worked on this for two years with the city administrator. And uh, I've got the report in front of me here. They, they recommend doing a nationwide search for this position. And I would have to agree with Alderman Versi that when we hired Director Amodio, who I have a lot of respect for, he's an excellent finance director, but we did not do a, a, a nationwide search for a city administrator. We did for finance director. Uh, I have a real problem uh, with the, the, uh, the, the permanent uh, chief administrative officer giving that person a five-year term like a, like a department head. As far as I'm concerned, that has to be an at-will employee and that person has to produce or they're gone. If they've got a five-year term, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. Almost impossible. And uh, therefore, uh, I'm not going to support either one of those motions. Uh, I think these two documents, 1331 and 1332, pretty well mirror what that committee spent two years on, uh, almost to a T, what they were recommending. And I hate to throw two years of a committee, and I sat in some of those meetings, not as many as I would have liked to because of time constraints, but Alderman Vanderwilly and Alderman Heideman worked on that committee for two years, and what, their rec what, what the recommendation of the committee is is basically what's in 1331 and 1332. And another thing that I'm gonna be working on very shortly is that if 1331 and 32 pass, uh, we have a deadline for uh, determining what the mayor's salary is gonna be for the next mayor that's elected in 2013. And because of a drastic reduction in the mayor's responsibilities under these documents, I'm going to come forward very shortly with a document that keeps a full-time mayor, but reduces that salary down to about $45,000 plus benefits. Uh, so I will be coming forward with that very shortly, and that approximately $40,000 reduction in salary will go to pay either the finance director or our, ch or, or our, our chief, uh, our, our city administrator's salary. Uh, so that's, that's where I'm coming on these two documents, and I'm not going to support those two amendments. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Again. I think Alderman Carlson hit it on the head. Do we want stability in city government in the future? Or do we want to leave positions open, create interim positions, um, and basically uh, uh, keep the upheaval moving? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with Alderman Carlson's um, vision on stability, but uh, for, for me, it's about being cost effective. Um, the scenario that uh, Alderman Versi laid out is the exact scenario that will keep me from voting for these documents as they are. I, I support the amendments 
that Alderman Hammond brought up, but I cannot support going out and do a nationwide search, having that person come back, and then having two six-figure salaries, and that's what will happen. Now, they can say that we're not creating a six-figure salary. Yes, we are. And when that nationwide search is done, you will have two of them. We will not be eliminating one under the, the, uh, the current um, resolutions that are being brought in. So that is my problem, is this, this, doesn't, this will not be cost-effective. Um, you're now asking someone to figure out a way to then pay for themselves. By moving the finance director to this position and eliminating that, that position at finance director, you are now making it cost effective. Like Alderman Versi said, one way or another we have to pay for this person. So either we eliminate the position and we pay out the rest of his term, or we let him ride out his term as the um, chief administrative officer. But either way, we have to pay this person. And, and I think, again, we need to take the personalities out of it. Look at what makes financial sense, what makes sense going forward for efficiency purposes, for financial purposes, 25 years from now, no one's gonna care who was the chief administrative officer for the first four years. Is it the best case scenario? No, but it's a scenario that we have to deal with. So for me, it's about being cost effective, making this cost effective immediately on the table of organization, and then benefiting from any potential savings that this person brings along, being a professional that is doing this on a day-to-day basis. So I cannot support these documents as they're written. I support the, the amendments as we would go forward. Um, I, I urge the council to support these amendments, make these changes to, to the documents, and, and let's move forward with this. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Um, taking personalities out of it, uh, the chief administrative officer will be working with the mayor as long as the mayor, as long as I'm here, I will be working with the chief administrative officer. There is nobody, and you can go do a nationwide search that I would rather work with than that guy sitting right back there named Jim Amodia, who is now our finance director. He is a, the, I guarantee you, you can do a nationwide Point of search. order. Point of order? Point of order. What is the point of order? Uh, we all know Mr. Amodio. We all have our opinions on him, and it's a point of order. You're, you're trying to sway the vote, so point of order. Okay, thank you, Alderman Bourne for your point of order. President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, uh, for the most cases, uh, I, I think all the person Carlson and Van Akron said my mind, uh, probably better than I could at this point in time. Uh, but the one point I want to add to what they had said is the uh, uh, comments on the nationwide search. Uh, I also was a member of that committee for two years uh, and fully support doing a nationwide search at some point in time. But the reason why I want to do a nationwide search for a city administrator is because the city administrator with skills will find savings. And it seems to me highly irregular to do the first step of trying to find cost savings by adding another layer uh, of government, adding another salary uh, to this position. We have the contract. He's with us in 2015. Let's put him in this position. Let's pass these amendments. Uh, we can still do the search at the end of that contract is up and, and move forward from there. Uh, but, it's, but it seems to me that, that if we hire a city administrator in the meantime, we have this element, we're going to slide them back, that's creating a new position. That, that sort of defeats the entire purpose. Uh, I, quite frankly, as everyone knows, I'm a supporter of the city administrator and have been for years, and I think we're finally at the step of taking the step. I would have a tough time voting for this document without these amendments made uh, at this point in time because of that, because we're creating uh, waste in government instead of finding ways of saving. So at this point in time, I urge you to, uh, the council to support the two amendments. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Only because I'm not afraid to show my ignorance every once in a while. Um, can we force the finance director to take the interim position? No. Um, the, the, if the position was offered to the finance director, and he, he has a contract with the city right now through 2015. Um, if his position is eliminated, uh, we're paying him through 2015. Uh, if he decides that he doesn't want to become the chief administrative officer um, and his position is eliminated, we're paying him through 2015. He has a contract for that position. That would be my opinion. Steve, would that be correct? Well, the only thing I'd say uh, contrary to that is it's not a contract. It's a term of office uh, by ordinance. It's established as a five-year term. It's not technically a contract. There's nothing uh, other than the offer of employment set for some terms, but it's basically uh, that position is a five-year appointment, however, and uh, that's 
goes through 2014. Again, he could be made an offer to buy him out of his position. Um, but again, that's paying somebody for not working. And then building on that, let's say we go with this interim <coughs> position. He chooses not to take that because he doesn't want to move back and forth. That starts our search immediately, so that six-figure mm -hmm. salary will come a lot sooner. Correct? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it would. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I believe uh, one of the things that was also in the study that was done by that study committee uh, was that they recommended uh, that the city keep a city uh, a finance director and also the city administrator. They thought it was a good idea to have that separation between the city administrator and the finance and the finance director. And uh, uh, if Mr. Amodio decides he doesn't want to take this interim position, then I would recommend going ahead and doing the, the nationwide search immediately. And you know, I, I have full confidence that either Mr. Amodio is going to find more savings in city government as he continues or the city administrator. The gentleman that we had in from Plymouth at the committee, uh, at the committee of the whole meeting, uh, their city administrator, whatever title over there, has saved them $4 million in the first year out of a budget that's a lot smaller than ours. And I had mentioned, uh, and I had mentioned one of the benefits of having a city administrator come to Sheboygan is you're getting a person with no preconceptions, no allegiances, and a fresh, fresh, fresh approach and perspective. And I think that's one of the most important things in, in a city administrator when we, uh, when we finally hire one is we need that fresh approach and we need somebody with no allegiances that's very important and no preconceptions of what's going on in this government. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Now remember we are discussing, uh, if we are going to vote on the amendments uh, the amendments to these two documents that were uh, brought forward by Alderman Hammond and seconded by President Rindfleisch. Alderman Hammond, you're the last light I have right now, and hopefully we can vote just on the amendments before anything else moves forward. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple notes, I guess. Um, again, we talked about job descriptions, and we hired a, a finance director. Absolutely, we did. But if you look at the job descriptions between the finance director and a city administrator, they're awfully similar. There are not a whole lot of differences between them other than there are some now department heads reporting to that particular uh, position. As far as separation, again, I go back uh, to comments I made at salaries and grievances. You still have a treasurer. Um, that treasurer does not go away. We still have somebody in charge of our finance department. What we've done now is eliminate one, process, one position because quite frankly, you know, some of those positions we just don't need anymore with technology. Um, you know, again, the at-will employee, I have no problem with that, but again, eventually, or at least at now, the pragmatic portion of this is to make this cost, uh, cost effective, we need to do it this way. In my opinion, we need to do it this way. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Last year, we also, many of us sat in this body, many, some, um, and we had the same conversation about a city administrator, and I believe many people who have spoke tonight said, no, we can't do a city administrator because it costs too much to hire another $150,000 salary if we're going to be looking at cuts possibly to various departments. So enter a resolution that makes this relatively cost neutral and some of those same people say, oh, now it's great. Now we can hire $150,000 salary. It makes me wonder if it's more about personality than it is about the, pragmatic, uh, the, the pragmatism of this. Um, as far as cost effective, cost savings, all of those types of things, Again, it's going to sound like I'm a Jim Amodio um, groupie. Um, no way, shape, or form is that the case. Um, but I've had the privilege of working with him for the last year, and he's doing an outstanding job. Um, over a million dollars in savings already. Um, so I, you know, I think he's demonstrated that he could adequately pay for himself. Um, again, the idea of having an interim, um, you know, if Director Amodio would say, I'm not going to take the interim tab, as Alderman Carlson said, now we're out to a national search or leaving the city administrator position vacant until something would change um, in our table of organization. So I just can't get behind something that says, you know, last year we, we couldn't do it, now this year we can. The only difference is now there's some personalities involved. So I would urge everybody to accept the amendments. Let's get the city administrator on the, tab on the table of organization and get the city moving forward so that we as a body can focus on policy and economic development and not the day-to-day -day daily tasks of, of what's going on, so I, thank you. 
Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Um, we will go to a vote on amendments. Alderman Sampson, we're so, yeah, on the amendments. Can we just go over a review since after all the discussion, can we just review exactly what it is we're going to be Sue, Sue will go there before, before we vote. Um, I will say, you know, financially, if anybody saw yesterday's paper, or maybe it was today's, I don't read the thing myself, but there was something that we are still facing a $1.3 million budget deficit in the city coming up this year. So keep that in mind. Sue, the amendments, please. Thanks. Okay. Um, I would suggest, first of all, that we do one at a time. Sure. Is that all right? Okay. The first one would be on 1331. Um, the amendment that we're voting on now would be to, if everybody has that last page of all the crossouts, we'd be putting that back in, that whole crossout section that starts with provided, however, that the initial appointee, on and on and on. That's the amendment. Does everybody understand that part of it? The amendment that we're adding back in. Okay. Everybody got Everybody's that? got that? Sue, next. That's what we probably should vote on first. Okay. Okay. So this is on uh, 1331, correct? 1331. This is the second amendment. Okay. 1331, the second amendment. We will be voting strictly on this amendment on 1331, putting the language back in uh, that uh, Sue just referenced. An I vote will pass the amendment. A no vote will not. Roll call, please. So this is just on the amendment, then not the whole document. This is just simply on, on the, the amendment. Second amendment. Thank you. And just on this one. Yep. Okay, Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? Aye. Oren? No. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Not good. Seven to seven. Seven to seven. <laughs> can I vote on this one, Steve? It doesn't I, I affect was, me personally. I, can, yes. uh, I will vi vote aye that the amendments pass. Can I ask for reconsideration? Motion to reconsider. Second. Eric, you have an opinion on that? My understanding from last time we had reconsiderations is that someone on the winning side exactly. has to make the motion to reconsider. Exactly. Somebody who voted I would have to make a motion to reconsider. There are no motions. The amendment passes. Uh, moving on, 1330. Wait, 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 wait. We got the other amendment. Wait. First of all, no, we need to go back. We need to still finish 1331. Now you want to vote on to accept and adopt the report of committee and to pass the substitute ordinance as, as amended. amended and amended. I'll word it as amended and amended. Can we do the amendment on um, 32? First. Yes. First. <coughs> that impacts, I think, how I would sure. vote. Sure. So we will return to 31. Uh, we are looking at the amendment on 1332 first. 1332, the amendment was? The only thing on 1332 is to eliminate the word interim on section three. So an I vote would eliminate, to strike the word interim. And the date. And the, pardon me? And the date would be 822, 2015. This is a different one. This is on 1332. The word interim will be struck under the amendment proposed by Alderman Hammond, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, on the amendment only, we will take a vote on that. An I vote will pass the amendment to strike the word interim. A no vote will leave the document as is. Any discussion on that? If there is none, roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? Aye. Warren? No. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 
Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Kath? No. Kittleson? No. Seven to seven. Anybody like to reconsider that voted aye? I thought I'd ask rather than have somebody else. Okay, if there's no reconsideration, the chair votes aye. Motion carries. Now we need to go back to 1331. Okay. For a final vote. 1331, this will be a vote as amended, with all the amendments in there. With the amendments and the amendments to the amendments. Do you want to to do the substitute ordinance. To the substitute ordinance. Do you want to do 31 32 together? No, I'd, I'd no. rather have them separate okay. if that's okay. Okay. Is that okay? 1331, roll call please. Bracelet? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? No. Are you sure? I think so. Belt? Aye. Born? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Kath? No. Kittleson? No. And Rinfleisch? Aye. Eight eyes, six no's. Motion carries. Now we go to 1332. For 1332. The, um, the substitute ordinance. As, as amended. amended. Mm -hmm. Any amendments to the amendments on this one? Just mm -hmm. as amended. Okay. Uh, in I vote, we'll pass the amended substitute ordinance. A no vote will not. Roll call, please. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? No. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. That was a no? No. Kittleson? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Raisler? No. Eight eyes, six no's. Motion carries. Okay, now where were we? <laughs> 40 and 41 have been filed. Yep. Other matters authorized by law, 1336. Um, will be referred to the Special Committee on Risk Management. 1337 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. Any other, other matters? Attorney McLean? Sure, Honor. 1338 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. That will be referred to Law and Licensing? Actually, that lies over. Oh, that lies over. Excuse me. I don't have the back 1339 is... An RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. That will go to law and licensing. 1340 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Elmer Schneider requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restriction in order to live at 2626 Georgia Avenue, apartment 9. Will be referred to public protection and safety. 1341 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Chris Jolitz being an amended page to his application for a request to the sex offender residency restrictions to change the address to 1405 North 15th Street. We'll also go to PPNS. 1342 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Kurt Grunewald requesting an encroachment located at 1614 North 26th Street for the purpose of retaining wall. City planning. And 1343 is the general ordinance granting Kurt Grunewald his heirs and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 26th Street, located at 1616 North 26th Street in the city for the purpose of retaining wall. We'll also go to city planning. We have a motion to adjourn the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.